In this video, we will learn three ways for solving a proportional missing value problem. So let's consider this story problem. Rubio paid $5 for two Harry Potter pens. If his teacher wants to buy nine pens, how much does his teacher need to pay? Now, how do you think a fifth grader who hasn't learned how to solve such a problem would approach this word problem? So he probably might think that two pens cost $5 another two pence, another five, until he get nine pence. But if he were to have five pairs of two pence, that's one too many. So he need to think how much would just one pen cost. So one pen will cost half of five dollars, which is 250. Then all he need is just to add up all the pens to get nine pence, and then all add up all the money, and then he will get 2250. And that's how a student could approach this problem in a very meaningful way. Don't you think so? Now, this is normally called the build-up strategy. All right. Now, do you think this build-up strategy is appropriate for solving the second problem? In this case, the school wants to buy 428 pens. That's quite a lot of pens, right? So if you're going to add two pens at a time, it's probably going to take a long time to get the answer. So can you think of a more efficient way to solve it? There are three efficient methods for solving this missing value problem. A missing value problem is one where three of the four values are given and you're asked to find the fourth. Yeah, let's begin with the scaling method. The scaling method is to think to relate the two pens and the 428 pens. How could I scale up two pens to 428? So basically, how many times of two pens do I need? In fact, 214 times of two pence will give me 428 pence, right? If each of the two pence costs five dollars, if I scale it by, by 214 times, then I also need to scale the five dollars by 214 times. So this is called the scaling method. In fact, the scaling method is related to the build-up method. The difference is that instead of adding two at a time, two at a time, and do it for 214 times, so the scaling factor method is just multiply 2 by 214. So this is analogous to multiplication. It's a more efficient way of adding repeatedly, right? Okay. So let's consider the, uh, the answer will be 214 times 5. 214 times 5, I think is 1070, all right? Okay, so this method sometimes is also called the within measure because we are scaling within the same measure. Pen is scaled up from 2 to 428, all right? So the second method is called the unit rate method or sometimes we call it the across measure. So this time we are relating the quantities vertically. So we are relating two pens with $5. How are they related? In fact, we can think of a unit cost. Two pens cost $5, so each pen would cost $2.50. So if we know the relationship between pen and dollar, which is $2.50 per pen, then we can use this relationship to find the cost for 428 pens. So this method is called the unit rate method. Uh, this is called the across measure method. And in school, most students actually learn the set up a proportion method. So for example, we could set it up as 5 divided by 2 equals to x divided by 4 to 8. Now, if we were to set up a proportion like this, we need to ask, actually, why should the two ratios be equal? But first of all, we need to ask, what does each ratio mean? For example, 5 over 2 is equal to 2.5. What does 2.5 represent in the context of this problem? 2.5 is actually the unit rate. It's the cost per pen, right? And then, then we have to ask, why should the second ratio, x over 4 to 8, be equal to the first ratio, which is 2.5? And it's because the unit rate remain the same. So because the the unit rate stays the same, we can equate the two ratios. Now, we can also set up 
the proportion using number of pens divided by number of pens equals to number of dollars divided by number of dollars. Take a look, 4 to 8 divided by 2 is 214. And then we have to ask why should the second factor x over 5 also be equals to 214? Now, again, can you remember what the 214 represent? It's actually the scale factor. We scale 2 pens by 214 to 428 pens. So likewise, we need to scale the $5 by 214 to get the cost we need. So this second proportion is related to the scaling method. Now, if we once we have set up the proportion, we have to solve for the unknown. Now, in this case, how to solve for x? Let's just consider one of the two proportions. To, get, to solve for x, we essentially need to get x by itself. One technique is to get rid of the denominator 4 to 8. How can we get rid of the denominator 4 to 8? We can multiply both sides of the equation by 4 to 8. So doing so, the equation remains the same. The second equation is equivalent to the first equation. So if we do that, we can cancel the 4 to 8 in the denominator with the 4 to 8 factor. So then x is just basically equals to 4 to 8 times 5 divided by 2. Now, a more common method that students are taught is the cross multiply. This cross multiply is more general. It's good in the sense that if the x is in the denominator, this cross multiply method is actually more efficient. But if it is x in the numerator, actually the technique one is more efficient. All right. So technique two, basically what we do is that we multiply the two and bring it up to the num numerator. And then the denominator four to eight, we multiply across and bring it up to the numerator. So what we get is actually 4 to 8 times 5 is equal to x times 2. Now, again, in order to solve for x, I need to divide both sides by 2. So as a result, my x is equal to 4 to 8 times 5 over 2, and that's equal to 1070. Now, if we use this cross multiply method, it's very important that you need to be able to explain why can we cross multiply. That means why can we get from the first step and rewrite it as the second equation. So one way to explain it is to get rid of both the denominators 2 and 4 to 8. So how can we do that? We multiply both sides of the equation by the same factors. That means we multiply 4 to 8 on both sides and then we multiply 2 on both sides. If you do that, then you will see that the 2 and 2 cancel, the 4 to 8 and 4 to 8 cancel. So now all is left is on the left side is 4 to 8 times 5, and on the right side is just x times 2, right? So that's one way of explaining is think of a way to get rid of the denominators of each fraction. And the second method is to make the two denominators have a common denominator. So as a, as at the moment, one has a 2, the other one has a 4 to 8. So how could I make them have the same denominator? I could actually multiply by a fraction of 4 to 8 over 4 to 8. Essentially, I'm just multiplying the left side by 1. That means I haven't changed the value of 5 halves because I'm multiplying 5 halves by 1. Likewise, on the right side, I'm multiplying x over 4 to 8 by 1. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So these two equations are actually equivalent. Now, if we do that, then the left side becomes 4 to 8 times 5 divided by the denominator is 4 to 8 times 2. And the right side also has the same common denominator. Since both of them has the same common denominator, then the numerator must be equal in order for the two fractions to be equal. So that's why we can simplify the, the proportion from here to this one. 
So this is the second way of explaining why we can cross multiply. All right. So with that, thank you.